If you've walked into a grocery store to buy chicken over recent years, you've probably been faced with sticker shock. And it's not just you. In May 2008, the average price of a pound of chicken was $1.19. In May 2023, that same chicken cost $1.92, a whopping 61% price increase, compared to inflation, which rose about 41% over the same period. And there's a big secret that big chicken corporations don't want you to know. They're in on it. We have seen a drastic change uh, in the chicken market. What has happened is, is that a handful of companies have gone out and taken over uh, the chicken market. Data, lawsuits, company documents, and private correspondences reveal that major poultry producers in the U.S. conspired to artificially hike up prices for years. And for decades, these corporations have not been held accountable. Here's a look into a multi-million dollar monopoly conspiracy and the fight to take big chicken down. One of the worst things that's happened in this country over the last 40 years is this laissez-faire attitude by our own government uh, to turn their backs uh, on antitrust or anti-monopoly enforcement. Over a hundred years ago, this country faced abusive market power by the land barons, the big meat companies, and our country responded by passing strong antitrust laws. About 40 years ago, our country, our federal government decided, ah, those don't matter anymore. Big's good. Big's better. Let big happen in this country. And it did. Over the past 50 years, the chicken industry has seen massive consolidation. The concentration of the top four poultry firms in the U.S. grew from 17% in 1972 to a staggering 60% today. Economists tell us that any time a market share of the CR4 gets over 40%, market abuses are likely. The four biggest players are Tyson, Purdue, Sanderson Farms, and Pilgrim's Pride, which is majority owned by the Brazilian company JBX. And as these companies have grown larger, their market reach has extended beyond just chicken. As we saw over the last 40 years, the federal government stepping back and letting big get big uh, in the chicken market, they let protein companies uh, be created. In other words, combination of chicken, beef, and pork. Why does that matter uh, to the consumer? Well, it used to be if beef prices got too high, as a consumer, I would just go buy chicken. If chicken prices got too high, I'd go buy pork. They were substitute goods. It kept checks and balances uh, in place in a supply and demand model. Today, when Tyson or JBS owns all those protein sectors, then it's the same company, and they're going to manipulate the price. This means that for consumers, there's an illusion of choice. During a pandemic, grocery store shelves were bare, and these companies were making record profits. They were claiming that they didn't have a place to process the animal, so they paid the farmer less. They told the consumers, oh, we had to idle a plant, we're gonna charge you more. The whole time, they were taking more and more money out of the supply chain and putting it into their pockets. And the power that these companies hold is only growing. In 2022, two poultry giants, Sanderson Farms and Wayne Farms, merged, despite an ongoing effort by the Biden administration to curb antitrust violations. Just days later, the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against Cargo Sanderson Farms and Wayne Farms, referencing a deep conspiracy to exchange information about wages and benefits as a violation of the Sherman Act, which bans conspiracy and restraint of trade. The three companies agreed to pay out an $85 million settlement to resolve the allegations. This is about criminal acts by corporations extracting money out of the consumer's pocket illegally. Following the DOJ suit, a number of states took action to fight against these price-fixing schemes. Alaska, New Mexico, and Washington have all filed lawsuits against major chicken producers. We filed a lawsuit because these companies were engaged in the kind of corporate activity that frankly drives people crazy. They were getting together and colluding over prices, specifically raising their prices together so they can make more of a profit, not have to compete with one another for prices. And we all know who loses out when that kind of behavior goes on. 
it's the consumer. Washington is the first state to file an anti-monopoly lawsuit against major chicken producers and win. Attorney General Ferguson sued 19 major producers with claims of price fixing, the illegal exchange of information and collusion that harmed millions of consumers in Washington. The lawsuit claims that these companies engaged in illegal anti-competitive behavior since at least 2008. And they were not engaged in what our system requires, competition. That's how we get prices that are fair for consumers is when companies are forced to compete. That is central to our system. Without that, the system falls apart and consumers are harmed. And that's what happened here. Consumers had to pay more for a very basic food product, their chicken. 15 out of the 19 producers have settled the case for around $35 million. But the case against the final four producers is ongoing. Anytime we bring a case like this, we're trying to accomplish multiple things. Number one, of course, we're trying to put some restitution, some dollars back in the pocket of Washingtonians who overpaid for a product. Number two, you know, we also want to send a message to the industry that if they violate our antitrust laws, if they break the rules in order to make a greater profit, well, there's going to be accountability and there's going to be a lawsuit and it's going to get expensive. Attorney General Ferguson and watchdog organizations like Farm Action are hoping the case settlements in Washington puts pressure on other states and Congress to take action. This is an issue of nationwide significance that's impacting Americans all across the country, regardless, frankly, of, of where they live. It is critical for government agencies like my office to act on behalf of the people of their respective state because, let's be honest, if you are an individual who's been harmed by an elaborate price-fixing scheme with 19 powerful corporations, what hope do you have to get redress? While the settlement in Washington is a big win, the fight against corporate greed and collusion in the chicken industry still has a long road ahead. I believe it's a, a long haul fight. I do believe that these state's attorney generals, the DOJ with the criminal case, uh, have really, uh, we've really moved forward. This problem has been around uh, for really 40 years. Uh, and to see uh, this much activity over the last two years is very encouraging. We would look to Congress to step up the pace of passing legislation to strengthen those current antitrust laws, to increase the penalties that companies can pay, and to require uh, those companies to be reviewed by DOJ. Uh, we do think ultimately uh, Congress needs to act.